Hello there! What's going on everyone today? We're going to be unboxing the Separatist Alliance Fleet Starter for Star Wars Armada. The Clone Wars is finally here and oh my goodness, look at that. Look at these ships. They're so freaking beautiful. Heavy, heavy box. A lot of stuff here. A full-blown starter. Uh, and again, this was not part of my pre-order. This was a purchase from my local game store at uh, Sci-Fi City here in Orlando, Florida. We are, um, you know, for some reason, pre-orders just didn't ship. I don't know. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Maybe maybe it'll uh, have shipped by the time you see this video. Who knows? I, 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 it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. But uh, Separatist Alliance Fleet Starter. This is a full-blown starter. Whatever... Uh, your, uh, you know, take is on Armada, whether you're a veteran player or a new player and you're uh, looking to start the game, this is going to have everything you need. It's got all the basic game compor components inside to get you started playing the game and uh, all the stuff you need for a new faction. Three ships, too, which is better than the original starter, which only had one ship for the Empire and two for the, for the Rebels. This is a single faction starter. We're going to unbox all of this. We'll look at the cards. We'll look at the ships uh, and the squadrons. And all of this, we've got a lot of cardboard in here too. We're going to look at all of that. Uh, while you're waiting for me to pull all this out, if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. That's going to automatically enter you to win one of my giveaways. I'm running the 12 Days of Life Day giveaway. 12 surprise giveaways running all month long. And uh, anything that doesn't get claimed out of the 12 Days of Life Day giveaways uh, are going to go ahead and find themselves going over to Patreon. Uh, some patrons will get, uh, you know, double chances to win. And these are all kinds of uh, surprise get gifts. So you'll so have to see. Uh, I usually announce winners towards the end of my videos. All you have to do to answer is just be a subscriber and leave a comment. It's as simple as that. There's more information. Uh, there's a lot of links down in the video description below. We've got our bases here. I'm looking at we've got our medium base we've got two small base thing uh base stands here and i know what you really want to see it's the ships let's go ahead and uh get these guys ready out uh, let's uh we've also got our squadrons too we got our vulture droids we're gonna look at the vulture droids first and then we will look at the ships uh, i know i kind of teased you there because i pulled the ships a little closer i apologize for that i'm a little uh, i'm a little crazy right now because i've got some armada clone wars in hand and um, I'm kind of going nuts because I'm like it's finally like it's been such a long wait such a such a long wait here are our vulture droids man they are they are sweet looking they're using like a harder plastic on these I wonder if it's the same plastic they're using for the legion now uh, because these look really good they, they look they look really really nice you can see right there look at that this there's good detail on these guys um, and uh, yeah, that's going to make them actually hold paint really nice too, considering that they're primarily metallic, and you can be able to put little bits of little bits of uh, color and uh, lighting and stuff on them. Um, also, I'm having a painting contest going on in my Discord. That's also going to be found in the, uh, the, the the description below. You're going to be able to find links for my Discord, to my website, to my merch store. If you're interested in buying any T-shirts or masks or uh, socks or any of that good stuff, we got all kinds of cool stuff like that down there in the uh, in the store. All right, we're going to look at the hard sell first. And, and, and it's, he's, he's kind of hard to get out of here. Ah, oh, they want to stick her finger in the hole there and then just pop it out. Uh, and there's a family-friendly channel. So, And there is a uh, dog barking because the dog is excited too. And I can't blame her. Hera is a good dog. And this is a beautiful ship. I Gosh, I want to get it on the stand here so I can better appreciate its beauty. There we go. We've got it on the, on the stand here. Um, this one is, is shaded really, really nicely and, and the paint, the color schemes for it, everything really, really nice. Um, I'm digging it. I am digging the ship. Look, it's got the landing. Oh, look at this, the landing clamps in the back. Do they, they don't move, do they? Cause like, you may have seen this like down like this in the background in, in episode two, right? Like they were on the ground, like taking off like that so like they like kind of land on the ground uh that way um that's just so cool like it, it's realistic to like how a, a rocket works you know like modern uh day real life rockets would kind of behave the same way and i've uh, only got forward facing guns uh pretty much and uh dude it's so cool this is a beautiful looking ship 
We've got uh, our six booster rockets there, and uh, man, I love it. Really great detailing on this ship. Um, we'll take a look at the other one, too. I think it's pretty much going to be the same. And yeah, I mean, they're not different, right? They're, they're, they're all from the same batch. It's not like this is this is ship A and this is ship B. They're, they're, they're both the same. But now we've got this thing. This is the number one most anticipated ship that I've had out of all out of this whole release um, and, and I gotta be careful with it because it looks very delicate this is the oh my goodness, magnificent there we go all right I got it out I had to put it on the front <gasps> whoa look at the bottom it looks like an insect doesn't it looks like looks like a beetle or something like that I almost expect legs to come out of that um, when we've got our this is where our base is going to attach right here Oh man, this is beautiful, dude. The Munificent is like one of the uh, the most iconic uh, ships from the Clone Wars, and uh, the Separatists run lots and lots of these. Um, you're only getting one here, and this is not going to be available uh, uh, in its own individual ship expansion. I mean, maybe someday, but. It's not at the moment, so uh, you may want to buy multiples of these. I think if you want to play Separatists, you got to get at least two starters. This is gorgeous. It's so pretty. Look at that. We got paint inside there. We got uh, lots of detail and shading underneath. And you normally you wouldn't even see the bottom, right? You wouldn't even see underneath. But they put all this all this detail in here. This is gorgeous. Look at the back, at the engines. We've got our engine glow. Right there, this is uh, this this ship is an absolute work of art. This may be the one of the most beautiful ships I've ever seen. Um, I mean, uh, to be you know, not not we, this, the Super Star Destroyer is kind of like king um, of of the ships, but but this one is is really something special. So uh, I'm I'm really liking it. It's going to go on its stand pretty easily. Let's see, hard sell goes on. Pretty easy, of course. We we'll get we'll get the cardboard in there later. Um, we've got uh, let's see what else we have in here. We've got our our learn to play guide. This is going to be the same rule book that comes in both the starters, whether you're playing Republic or Separatists or both. And you'll have uh, another learn to play guide here. And we're going to have all of our, our cardboard uh, in it right here. And this is going to have everything we need to outfit our ships. It's going to have our squadron bits. Uh, it's going to have our ship token bits. It's going to have our new um, chaff slash focus tokens, uh, our shield bits, and all of our cardboard uh, is going to go in here. And uh, and then, of course, our dice pack, which is always going to have dice. Again, you're getting everything you need to play the game, um, all of your movement tool, as well as your command dials. And uh, another thing that is cool in here is that you're also going to get a bunch of pass tokens. Uh, I think they're on the middle one. Let's open it up and make sure because we did get pass tokens in the Republic version. And if you've seen my unboxing for that one already, uh, you'll know that they gave us uh, six pass tokens, which was which was a pretty good amount. Uh, this one is probably the same. Here we go. There's actually three sheets of cardboard in our middle one. We're getting all of our obstacles. And, uh, and then there we go. Yeah, with the six pass tokens. Very, very cool. Uh, I am, I'm really liking this. Um, all right, so there's our, uh, our, our cardboard. And then we flip this over. And then there's the other versions. Everything is double-sided, including the squadron backs from a named and the unique to the uh, generics. Let's go ahead and take a look at the cards. And look at all those cards we're getting. We're getting a lot of cards in here and a new damage deck. All right, we're going to get our little helper cards, which are going to be nice. There we go. We got our, our helper cards. We've got, uh, let's see, we've got our new damage deck. Um, this is the full size cards. Uh, and and I, I've kind of already gone through every single damage card. If you just wanted to get uh, updated images of all the damage cards, uh, I did that in a little bit more detail in my Galactic Republic Fleet Starter unboxing. So be sure to check that out. Um, we've got our Vulture Droid uh, Fighter Squadron. Uh, with their AI Anti Squadron 1 and Swarm It. Only eight points, you're gonna be able to run a lot of these. You're gonna get four of them here, so you can uh, start out with, with four. If you buy two starters, that's already gonna give you eight Vulture Droids. It's not much, just nice. Um, yeah, so again, if they activate them with the Squadron Command, they get an extra die uh, for Anti Squadron Fire, which is nice. Um, 
You also have the Horchal prototypes. If you uh, so, if you maybe want to run one of these, you can only run one because it's unique. It's gonna be 16 points and also has the scatter and brace. He's also got anti squadron AI and uh, swarm, but he also has before an enemy ship or squadron at distance when he moves, you may perform an attack against that ship or squadron even if you are engaged. Of course, that attack is not from um, coming from a command, so you won't get an extra die on it, but it's still. Uh, it's, Hell, especially I guess a ship. I think that's what you really want to do with this guy is is kind of park him next to a ship that's about to move and uh, hopefully you roll that double red. You know, that's, I think that's what you kind of want to do. Uh, you would get the swarm reroll though. We get our uh, all of our uh, basic level uh, objective cards. All of the basic ones. We don't get this, the extra cards that come in the, uh, the, uh, the, con uh, the campaign packs. So those are not part of this. And we're gonna get our, our our ship cards. Oh, these are nice. So we've got um, we've got our munificent class comms frigate right there. Uh, six hull red anti squadron die. Uh, lots of red on the sides and a little bit of blue in the front, so it can come at you straight on or or uh, side arc you from a distance, which is kind of what it wants to do. And if you're getting too close, it'll just turn into you and then double arc you from the front, which I think is really the. Uh, you know the best play if it if it manages to do that and hopefully it's weakened you because uh it's a slow ship so uh but it does have some maneuverability even at speed two man it gets that one click and then the two at speed two and it can salvo it can counter back especially with two red in its rear arc which is especially nice it's got the brace the redirect and salvo two command three squadron and four engineering uh only six hull on here it's a medium ship it's uh it's not gonna last that long. Hopefully his shields will hold out though, because it's got a lot of shields, right? Four, three, three, two, pretty high shields. It definitely wants to keep those shields running and it will try to cannibalize other fleets, uh, ships in the fleet. And of course, flipping it over, it's droid, bombard, and comms at 70 points. And there's our upgrades that we can put on there. Uh, we also have the, uh, the, the star frigate version. Which one was this again? This was the, uh, the comms frigate, yes. The star frigate, a little bit stronger, uh, for the uh, a black and red for anti squadron, which is beautiful. I love that. Two squadron, two command, two uh, four engineering. Uh, same anti ship dice, pretty much. Um, and our upgrades are right there. And it's gonna be seventy three points. Uh, and the real difference here is um, the defensive retrofit versus the offensive retrofit on that one. And then uh, the ships themselves are uh, otherwise pretty darn similar, right? I mean, the, the anti-squadron is the big thing and versus he gets a extra squadron. So he's the better carrier, he's the better damage dealer. Yeah, kinda, sorta. That's kind of the way I look at it. For our hard cells, we're actually getting four cards, two of each because we have two hard cells. We've got um, we've got this guy here at uh, command one, squ uh, two squadron, three engineering. I love this particular ship because uh, of a lot of reasons, but Five hull, uh, we've got the Evade, which has been newly boosted to be much nicer now. We've got the uh, Brace and Redirect. Um, only two yaw at any given speed. Uh, at one, it's all bunched into the one, but at two and three, you get well, the first and second click, you get a yaw each on. Uh, you begin to kind of get a little less maneuverability the faster you go, but it can go speed three. It's currently the fastest ship available to the Separatists. <laughs> they, uh, Hey, but it's always gonna are pointed forward. It has a little bit of side arc, you know, if you happen to happen to get in the side arc. But I mean, it's pretty much a forward shooting ship. Um, not the strongest dice pool, but at least it has a you know it can it can pack a little bit of a punch. You know, uh, you might get an accuracy in two doubles or something like that. Maybe stop a brace and get four damage on somebody if you if you're really lucky or something like that. Um, and of course, we flip it over, and this is where this thing really shines. It has fleet support natively. It also has support team and two officers, which is exceptional. Uh, it means you can build this in a variety of really good support ways. Here's uh, both versions of that card. We also have our hard cell class battle refit, which has upgrades our dice to red all around there. And I also have a blue and a black for the anti-squadron, which is exceptionally nice. We do lose one in the squadron uh, points though. Uh, this one goes up a little bit from 47 to 52, and it has a little bit more offensive and more general purpose upgrades with the turbo laser defensive retrofit, offensive retrofit, and single officer 
only. And here's both versions of those cards. We also have some upgrades. We're going to take a look at the upgrades here. We have... You disappoint me. Count Dooku. Uh, Count Dooku is be going to... Uh, he's awesome. He's 30 points. He's going to start with three uh, commands. Uh, you got to choose at least two different types. So you can't do like all three engineering. But at the start of each ship phase, you can discard one of them. And uh, you can... Each enemy ship gains a rage token matching the commands have you've chosen. So you can try to stop your opponent from doing nav or try to stop. This is He's really going to hurt carrier fleets that want to do those squadron commands. And you can start handing out those rage tokens. Uh, now, of course, you can spend a command token to get rid of a rage token. So if you have ways to strip tokens, it's going to hurt even more. Uh, but ultimately, what you're trying to do with Dooku is stop somebody from being able to access their fleets. Uh, you know, stop somebody from being able to... Uh, to, you know, to do a certain command, and you're going to be able to choose that uh, based on the fleet that you go up against. So he gives you a lot of choice, and uh, but he doesn't do anything positive for your own fleet. He only hurts your opponent, which is an interesting kind of take on a new commander. We have Kraken here, who's a little bit more to my liking, uh, for 30 points also. Uh, once per activation, while a friendly ship is attacking a ship, if another friendly ship is at close to medium range, the, the defender, the attacker may change a die to a face with one icon and no other icons. So this is really, really good for manufacturing an accuracy when you absolutely need one, or just mitigating against those blank red dice, which sometimes happen to have, or I mean a blank black die also, but just having, having the ability to change one die is great, and especially if you combine that with other things but it's only once per activation so if you double arc somebody you can't do it twice we got the officer rune hako who starts with two commands and then can also strip commands from other ships and he, he's excellent on your flagship or any ship that's going to want a lot of command tokens uh watch tambor with at five with five uh five cost there for another officer and uh, when you do an engineering command you can spend up to two shields from uh any of your hull zones or any one hull zone on another friendly ship at distance one to five and gain twice that many additional engineering points. He's excellent to have on your flagship to help regenerate its shields. If you really need to do a big, big engineering turn, he's gonna be excellent for that. We get two copies of the T-Series Tactical Droid who's gonna let you be able to upgrade a engineering token, engine, a nav token, or a squadron token all the way up to a command. But you have to exhaust him, and this is our new symbol here, which means this card exhausts but does not ready on its own. There are some cards that will uh, ready on their own, like reactive gunnery here. That's a symbol that means it readies on its own each turn, but these you're going to have to spend a command token to ready it. Uh, that symbol means it can be of any type, whereas versus battle droid reserves, you same thing in exhaust, but to ready you have to spend it specifically an engineering token. Uh, you uh, when you do an engineering command with this one, you may exhaust this card. If you do, you can flip any number of your face up damage cards uh, with the crew trait face down, and then during face down damage cards uh, during uh, discarding them costs one fewer, which is nice because normally that costs three. That means it only costs two. So he's actually really nice to combo with Watt Tambor or somebody like that, and get two copies of that. We're gonna get one copy of the awesome Hyperwave Signal Boost uh, during the squadron phase. When it's your fleet's turn to activate squadrons, you may exhaust this card to choose a number of unactivated friendly squadrons at close to long range up to your squadron value. This turn, activate each of those squadrons while attacking with each of those squadrons. AI is treated as if it were activated by a squadron command. Now this means only while attacking, so they don't get to also move and then attack. This will work much nicer if you get some rogues uh, in the faction at some point, they, they may not have access to that many rogues, especially if you get rogues with AI, which would be strange, uh, but a rogue with AI is you know, beyond the realm of possibility. It actually might give you some interesting choices. Do I let this rogue go by himself and lose a die, or do I activate him with a squadron command and kind of negate the ability of him to think for himself? I mean, I could see that being you know, a, a complex problem uh, with, with squadron orders, you know, if something like that were to happen. Uh, we're also going to get a copy of the reserve hangar deck, uh, just newly resized. Uh, you know, uh, reactive gunnery, uh, awesome card. We've talked about this a little bit on the channel, but it's going to let you potentially get the salvo defense uh, effect, even if you don't have a salvo defense token. And you're going to get two copies of swivel mount batteries, which is going to let you kind of turn your side guns forward, increasing your firepower to any one hull zone at the cost of adjacent hull zone firepower. 
Uh, we're going to get one copy of the awesome Heavy Ion Emplacements. This is actually really awesome that it comes in here. Uh, this is not available in the Galactic Republic Fleet Starter. Of course, it is available in the Upgrade Card Collection and also in the uh, Profundity Expansion from uh, Old School Armada. But this uh, updated to just show that it exhausts, but really no fundamental change to it. Just the wording and everything was clear, uh, a little bit more clear. We're going to get a copy of uh, the two new uh, Munitions Resupply and Parts Resupply. These are, are the new uh, fleet supports that are going to hand out Concentrate Fire Tokens or Engineering Tokens, respectively. Next up are the titles. We're going to be looking at the Tide of Progress 12. And um, this one is going to be an exhaustible title. It's going to take an Engineering to ready it, but only two points. It says, before you're dealt a face-up damage with the ship trait, you may exhaust this card and discard that damage card without resolving its effect. So it saves you a, potentially a hull point. Um, it has to be face-up, and you only have six hulls, so it may or may not happen. But it's only two points, so it's kind of, I think it's definitely worth the risk. So I like that. And then we've got the Sa Nalaur uh, at five points. Uh, while defending, if you're at speed two uh, or higher... You may spend a defense token to resolve the uh, evade defense effect instead of that token's effect. You cannot resolve the evade defense effect more than once per attack. I know when this was first revealed, I don't think we knew exactly how the new evade was going to work. So I like that uh, this even more now. Um, first off, this ship doesn't have access to evade. The other thing is... Um, speed two or higher and it can only go speed two so i think it's kind of just good future proofing because there may uh, potentially be ways in the future to make ships go faster than they normally could which sounds actually really awesome to me um so i'm hoping that becomes a, a thing but uh but also you know that evade you can potentially you know get rid of an additional die with it if you spend it um so i like that so if you've got an orange um an orange defense token then maybe maybe you want to do that uh, we also have our hard sell titles. We've got the Foreman's Labor at five points. This is an exhaustible that will re-ready itself automatically each turn. Before you suffer damage from an attack, if the defending hull zone has at least one shield remaining, you may exhaust this card to reduce the total damage by one. I love this one. It's just simple and straightforward. Just minus one damage as long as I've got a shield left. Um, and that's uh, it's good. I mean, it's just, this just ship has redirect. Uh, and it's going to want to try and keep those shields up as best it can. This is going to help it accomplish that goal. So I like Foreman's Labor. But more for the support side of things, we've got Beast of Burden, the ultimate support title for an ultimate support ship. Uh, Beast of Burden is also re uh, automatically rechargeable once per round or at the uh, you know uh, beginning of each round. Six points. When you activate, you may exhaust this card and spend one or more of your defense tokens to choose up to that many defense tokens on friendly ships at distance one to three and ready those defense tokens. He's gonna put that flagship, like you look, that flagship might have spent all three of its tokens. He's gonna say, they're all green again, or multiples. Like maybe maybe you get two starters and you're gonna run two of these bad boys. And then you're gonna have this one little guy flying behind him being like, boop, 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 support, support, support. I just love it, love it, love it, love it. Great, great title. All right, you guys, that's it for the Separatist Alliance Fleet Starter. Again, if you are new to this game, this is the starting point. you got to get one of these first. This is going to have everything you need to get you started, although not enough to get you into a full 400-point game, which is kind of a standard game. Uh, two of these ought to do that, though. You probably want to pick up a squadron pack as well, but uh, we'll have new What to Buy First Buyer's Guide type videos coming, and I'll probably do one for the Clone Wars factions, uh, both kind of consolidated. Uh, even though I don't think it's really necessary, there might be some players, uh, some brand new players, that do want a buyer's guide, even though there's so very little. And I will still do that to kind of be that entry point. So look for more Armada videos. Hopefully we'll get some gameplay videos soon. They're a little harder to do now with COVID being a thing, but uh, not totally impossible. Maybe there'll be another community challenge versus you, the viewer. All right, guys, that's all I've got for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Big thanks to all my uh, patrons. You guys are amazing, and I could not do this without you. So thank you for your continued support. If you're interested in becoming a patron, uh, there's links down in the description below for uh, that and other ways to support the channel. You can also find links to my social media, my website, my Discord. You can hop in there and ask questions join the community in discord i will talk to you guys later i want to thank you all so much and as always have a great day